Joining me now live is attorney Areva Martin. Uh, to break all this down, because you know, especially John Legend's tweet at the end there, he says that he hopes this leads to criminal justice in this situation. And it's just so interesting to me, Areva, because, you know, we saw the fall of Harvey Weinstein, and so many people after we saw him fall said, look, these rumors were going around in Hollywood for years. And now we're getting a similar situation, you know, with this new, these new accusations coming to light about R. Kelly. But again, these rumors, and he's denied, but these rumors have been around for years in the industry. Uh, so what do you think? What does the future look like for him legally? Uh, TMZ has reported that he plans or threatened to at least sue Lifetime over the documentary. Uh, what could come from this, if anything, for him? Could he face charges? Well, a couple of things. With respect to the threatened lawsuit against Lifetime, apparently it has not been filed, or at least it didn't stop lifetime from airing uh, the documentary on Thursday night. And as far as reports go, they plan to continue, you know, airing this six part documentary. So unless they're going to go into court, uh, R. Kelly's team and ask for some kind of injunctive relief, it looks like this uh, documentary is going forward. Now, of course, there could be a lawsuit that follows. But I would suspect that if R. Kelly really thought he had the kind of substantial evidence that would convince a court to stop Lifetime from airing the documentary, he would have gone into court and done so. He wouldn't allow the documentary to be aired and then fight about it later. So I don't know how much credible evidence he has that would convince a court uh, to prevent Lifetime from airing it. As it relates to potential charges, we see uh, in this era of Me Too, a lot of prosecutors that weren't willing to take on a certain kinds of cases have become emboldened. So uh, I don't know that the jury is still out as it relates to whether uh, some prosecutor in some district uh, around this country will uh, receive complaints from women that say they were sexually assaulted or raped even uh, by R. Kelly and may be willing to open uh, an investigation and potentially prosecute him for uh, what has been alleged to be, you know, really criminal conduct. And what it has to do with, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the time statute of limitations is an issue, right? And where the complaint yes. allegedly happened, because Harvey Weinstein is only facing charges in New York. Absolutely, Lauren. That, that's an excellent point. The statute of limitations, which is the law which prevents uh, older claims from being filed in certain jurisdictions definitely plays a part in this. And also evidence. When you talk about filing charges on cases that happened decades ago, you've got to find evidence. You have to find, uh, you know, witnesses that will have information that's credible that will come forward. And we see in a lot of these cases involving R. Kelly, we'll hear allegations, and then sometimes we'll hear women, uh, you know, who have conflicting stories about what happened. So there's always been this, you know, these rumors swirling around R. Kelly dating back to the 2000s. If you recall, in the late 2000s, he was actually prosecuted but acquitted for child pornography growing out of, of allegations that he, you know, had sex with a, a minor and, uh, you know, videotaped their sexual encounter. Uh, but he was acquitted of those charges. But these rumors have been around now for decades. Uh, and many women, including me, are, are glad to see this documentary aired because it does give a voice to these victims that, that in many ways don't appear to ever have received any kind of justice based on the allegations that they're making. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, like we said, more than 50 interviews, uh, women who worked with him, uh, his ex-wife did an interview for this documentary. So uh, people who, you know, apparently spent very significant time with him um, speaking out about what they say they experienced. And Absolutely. if he were to sue, what do you think he would sue? Would it be a defamation lawsuit or, or what could you see him going for? Yeah, apparently he sent, uh, his lawyer sent a, a really strongly worded letter to Lifetime before the docu-series uh, aired, uh, you know, challenging them and threatening them and, uh, you know, basically admonishing them about, you know, re uh, airing this series, claiming that they knew that some of the stories told by some of the women in the doc uh, were false. And uh, some of the reports say that he has video, uh, audio tapes that can prove the allegations are indeed untrue. But Lifetime was not moved or phased by this letter because they moved forward in airing the documentary and say they're going to continue to air it. Uh, so his claim would be defamation. It would be that, that Lifetime knows or should have known that the stories told by the women are false and that they're only being told to malign his character 
uh, and as he claims to, you know, somehow extort money or, or, or you know, make themselves famous uh, at his expense. But th that's a tall task for him legally. Uh, he's a public figure, so he'd have to prove not only that the uh, allegations are false, but that the airing of these allegations was done somehow maliciously. Mm -hmm. Uh, and from everything we've seen and heard, these women are sticking by their stories. Uh, and there's no evidence at this point that he can prove that the allegations are indeed false. Ariva, thank you so much. Ariva Martin and episodes three and four of the docuseries will air tonight, Friday night at 9 p.m. Pacific on Lifetime, episodes five and six, Saturday at 9 p.m. Pacific. Ariva Martin, thank you so much. Thanks, Lauren.